very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, let me tell you a little bit about why I'm up here. And that was because Dave Harless, we remember Dave Harless, he went to Missouri and with his bride. And when he was commander, he and I talked and he said, uh, we need to get this on the program because we need your help. And I'll tell you why we need your help. Because we are having trouble getting boys and girls to go to Boy State and Girl State. This is not a question of money. Several years ago, Donna and I gave money for a boy to go to Boy State. And the night before he was supposed to go, go his dad called Dave and said, uh, well, he's going to football camp instead. And it's just a shame because these youngsters have no idea what they miss out. And I hope I can relate that to you here when they don't actively take an interest in this. So I'm going to jump right into it. And I want to tell you that uh, if you are a member of the American Legion, when you have a meeting right here on this screen, you see something called the preamble. And we do the Pledge of Allegiance, but we also do the preamble. And if you look up here, it says, in the middle of this, to inculcate a sense of individual obligation to the community, state, and nation. And then on down it says, transmit to posterity the principles of justice, freedom, and democracy. We read that, every word of that, in every <coughs> meeting of the American Legion. And clearly, boy state and girl state, that's what they're trying to achieve with this. Boy State was started in 1935 in Illinois, and it came to Virginia in 1939. And why was it created? Well, because there was, believe it or not, the Nazis were having camps in the United States, and the communists were having camps in the United States. Uh, you may find that hard to believe, but the uh, so right up here, the young um, um, pioneers of America was a Communist Party USA organization from 1922 to 1934. And they were having camps just like Boy, uh, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and Cub Scouts. And they were indoctrinating these young people in this country about the great benefits of socialism and how bad it is to the free enterprise system. So what happened was the American Legion decided to do something about it. And they said, we're going to educate young people from all of the schools that we can across the country about what our government, how it works and what it stands for. And. Uh, this is a picture right here of some of those youngsters. This right here from the Soviet, eventually the Soviet Union, after World War II. But this right here um, is uh, saying, be prepared. Just like the Boy Scouts. But it wasn't the Boy Scouts. So, a little bit about um, Boy State. I went two years ago. I was a counselor. The first time I went was in 1962 in the state of Oregon. And uh, I never thought anything more about it after that for many, many years. But uh, I met some interesting people. And uh, I, I realized probably what the most important thing I learned at Boy State was how little I knew about uh, how to associate with other individuals and things like that. Um, it has led to many careers in public service, and what it does is it conducts legislative sessions that has court, it develops a working knowledge of government at all levels of government. So that people show up on Sunday, and I happen to be one of the people that uh, registered these 400, some of these 400 youngsters. And I was blown away 
they have their act together. I mean, they, yes sir, and no sir, and uh, it, you could just tell that they came ready to learn something and to be, to make a, a difference. I was very impressed. Um, I'm not going to read all this, but uh, I will tell you that uh, they have speakers that come each day from all levels of government and a highly qualified staff. And two of the, of the youngsters um, are selected to go to Boys Nation. And you'll see a picture here of Bill Clinton. And he went to Boys Nation and he's uh, shaking JFK's hand when he went to Boys Nation. But uh, I want to talk a little bit about the speakers. The year I went, um, Lieutenant Governor uh, Winsome Sears spoke, and she did a phenomenal job. And the way you can tell that is the boys would line up on the two aisles to ask questions. And there were lots of questions, and she loved the fact that there were lots of questions. And the other one was the Attorney General Mioris. And I tell a story about uh, something that he shared. I want to step back here. Um, he's talking about our form of government. And he said, you know what makes our government different from all others? Of course, all the boys are looking around. They don't get it. I didn't get it. He says, that's what makes them different. He says, in our country, you don't have to wait until, you don't have to worry in the middle of the night as a citizen that you're going to get a knock on the door because you criticized your government. And that's what he was talking about. You could have heard a pin drop, needless to say. We also heard from uh, the mayor of Roanoke. So it's of all levels of government. And we heard from uh, uh, legislators past legislators. There's Bill Clinton and some, uh, I want to share a few others. Uh, Dick Cheney, General Clark, the Joe Lieberman Senator, uh, Roger Ebert, Rush Limbaugh, uh, Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alonso, Elito, uh, Rockstar Bon Jovi, Bruce Springsteen, Neil Armstrong, and Michael Jordan all went to Boy State. So, as I said, they are people. Uh, they arrive on Sunday, and um, each day they have breakfast at seven. And just so you know, it was at Radford, and uh, it used to be at Liberty University. And Girl State is at Longwood. It was the year I went. I assume it's still there this year. Um, and it's a drive. So Radford is a beautiful campus, right downtown Radford. And everything is close together. And that is, um, so you have to understand that of the 400 students, they break down into 10 cities. And the city is the, the basic unit. And within that 10 city of 40, 20 of them are nationalists and 20 of them are federalists. Now that does, that, there's no connotation of liberal, conservative, or anything else. It's just a designation so you can have a two-party system so the youngsters can understand how it works. Um, they have instruction in the morning. So think about it. On Sunday night, um, or Sunday ap afternoon, they show up. By Sunday night, they have a band. They have a color guard, and they lower the flag. And by uh, Monday morning in the main auditorium, they have a choir singing, and they have a minister give a uh, uh, short sermon. And they, uh, all of this, they hit the ground running. That's the only way I can put it. And they, um, their days are filled. Uh, they are. Uh, lights out at 10.30, and uh, in the afternoons there's competition with uh, sports, and it's all orchestrated. And here's a few pictures. There's the, 
I think they bring their own flag with them because they have the biggest flag they can find so the youngsters can uh, fold it. And this is this picture down here in the right, well, lower right, is uh, that is at Radford. And there's the speaker. And then each day, each city moves around. So nobody has an advantage. Those are the two aisles I was talking about when a person wants to ask a question. And amazingly enough, usually there were still youngsters standing in line to ask more questions uh, when it was over. I went to a, a mid-level senior of uh, 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 Air Force school for nine months. And uh, you, <laughs> getting people to ask questions is like pulling teeth. Nobody wanted to ask a question. Not so here, completely different. And the cities are named after um, dignitaries, most of them with a little bit of a military bent because it's related to the American region. Uh, I was a counselor for Bradley, named after Omar Bradley. Uh, Nimitz is one, and uh, there's another, a bunch of them like that. So the first night, Sunday night, they, the city elects a sheriff. And he serves in those capacities. And they then put out the word, who wants to be mayor? And each, if a person wants to be mayor, or even to be the sheriff, they have to go up in front of their peers and speak for 60 to 120 seconds about why you should vote for me. So you see right there, you have youngsters that are starting to sell themselves. And that's what we're talking about, is they're packaging themselves in a manner that will last the rest of their lives. And that's why it's so important, because they get something there that they can't get anyplace else. It's why I tell youngsters, you don't have to be real good at public speaking, but you at least have to be able to stand up in front of people and tell them what you think. Because that's the way we communicate. And uh, there are the other positions, some of them. You have uh, Supreme Court justices, and you hear cases. And some of the cases go all the way to the Supreme Court. And they are able to dovetail all this in throughout that week. And as they do that, as it gets toward the governor, each of the two parties has a, uh, a, a, a conference. And they have, uh, and I, I couldn't believe what I saw. In my city, one of the youngsters was over in other cities saying, listen, if you'll, if you'll vote for my lieutenant governor, I'll get my people to vote for you. I, <laughs> I mean, uh, you can tell some of these youngsters knew long before they came here why they wanted to come and what the benefits were. Okay, that's, uh, I covered that pretty well. They get a little flag book, and it's uh, basically a schedule that tells them where they need to be uh, at all the times. And they march everywhere they go, and because it's a, a different uh, when they're in their cities, they break down and, and then they get together for uh, the, the common meetings. And I talked a little bit about this. They hear from senators and delegates. They learn about the assembly procedures. There's a retired uh, diplomat, Bowley. Anybody know who I'm talking about? Um, he comes and he's exceptional. He really gives a nice presentation. And um, as I said, there was a Q&A for the mayor of Radford. Then they have a swearing in ceremony for the sheriff. And they have a afternoon activities. And one of the challenges is, I think a lot of the kids would have liked to have done more, but they, there's only so much time, so they can't, they can't do it all. And they do nominations for mayor, senators, and the House of Delegates.
And then on Tuesday, they do the elections and they uh, talk about the Virginia legal system. And they have a swear, first they elect these mayors and senators and House of Delegates through the party system, the two party system. And then they have a, a swearing in ceremony. And I mentioned that uh, Virginia Attorney General came. And then they have party conventions. On Wednesday, the Lieutenant Governor showed up, and then they, the party conventions, that's what I was, the word I was trying to think of. Um, and they, so each of the people who are running for governor stands up. It, now he's not talking just to his city, or even to his, uh, to his party. At one point, he's going to talk to the whole group of 400 youngsters and tell them why he should be governor. So you can see that now you're starting to form these, this understanding of exactly how government works. And another nice little thing they do is they have the Virginia State Troopers show up and talk a little bit about, uh, I know they brought a dog, and so the people could see how the dog worked, and, and they show how the, the law enforcement works with, yeah, without, within the state of Virginia. Yeah, there he is. Uh, Lieutenant, former Governor, uh, Lieutenant Governor Bill Bowler. And then they have a swearing in the Supreme Court justice. They have statewide elections. And they have a talent show that is real. <laughs> you're scratching your head and you're saying, how in the world can I? These youngsters put all this together so quickly. There's a newspaper every day. And it's not just one piece of paper, it's a, several pieces of paper, and it's talking about things within Boy State, and sometimes there'll be little side remarks about something that might have happened in a particular city. But everybody's wondering, what happened in that city? You know. But uh, so they, they had that. And I mentioned that they had a band, and to my, I can't understand how they can show up on Sunday if by Sunday night the band is playing um, tunes, and they're doing a good job too. They really are. So by Friday, uh, they hear from the director of the Virginia National Guard. The uh, the governor was not able to attend the year I went, but uh, as I said, the lieutenant governor did. And they tried cases, and uh, I can't remember what the cases were, but there's not a lot of them, but they do try a case, and that they, they get to understand the appeal process and how it eventually ends up at the, uh, the Supreme Court level. And then they have a college day where over 50 colleges come in so that the youngsters can talk to any of the people. Um, I don't know if it's still the case, but uh, Dave Farless told me that um, anybody that went to Boy State and applied for Ham Hampton Sydney, that they reduced the tuition by $5,000 for any youngster that went to Boy State. I don't know if that's true or not. If it's still true, or, uh, or what. Um, in each of the cities, uh, I was an assistant counselor, because I'd not been before. And uh, so we sat down and came up with some questions, and then we put those questions out to anybody that want, in our city at 40 who wanted to be considered to go to Boys Nation. And so they then could formulate their answer and then they came in and sat in front of us and we uh, talked about, um, we talked over the questions. And then from that, we selected, I think one from each of the cities. And then eventually that went to another group of a selection, and eventually uh, two people from that will go to 
went to Washington, D.C. for a week and uh, saw, they got to see government and a lot of stuff like that. So they form, uh, they have laws, they do laws. Um, most of them um, were, well, like, um, they might want a law that says that the boy state and girl state can uh, have a date to get to know each other or something like that. So um, there was a lot of, uh, most of the laws are not exactly feasible um, in the way they did it. But um, they still, they got to understand the process of making laws and how they got uh, it elected. So this is the last day, and uh, they announce any new laws. They have athletic awards, best citizen, and best city. Uh, there's inspections. I was raised on the railroad. Um, so uh, each day, there's inspections of the rooms. It's dormitory, so it's two to a room, and the staff goes through and determines which is the, they felt did the best job, if there's demerits for somebody not keeping up to, uh, to speed or something like that. And that combined with what positions the city. So if a city um, is responsible for the, the governor coming from him, his city, then they get a bunch of points for that. And at the end of the, um, of the week, there's a best city. And the best city, um, when they take pictures, when each of the boys leave, they get, uh, they get this right here. So, Anybody that wants to can look at that. Don't worry about that. Um, anyhow, this is uh, each of the cities get their picture taken in black and white and color, but only the best city gets their picture put in here in color. All the other cities, it's black and white. So here's something to strive for to be the best city. As it turned out, um, the city that I was assistant council, and it turned out to be the best city. And I, I'm not sure why, but anyhow, we did. And that's about it. I'll be happy to answer any questions.